episode two, it was no accident. Episode two was frustrating because for a number of reasons. Number one, the police were so dismissive of all of this evidence, whether it was circumstantial or just real evidence, they were so dismissive and their go-to response was, we don't deal in fantasy, we don't um, entertain conspiracy theories. Well, I understand conspiracy theories, but a lot of this was based on facts that the police just totally dismissed. Get into these unanswered questions slash coincidences um, evidence. All right. Sorry, it was so much in this episode that made you think or made you believe that this was no accident. And I, I'm of the opinion that it's no accident. There is only four episodes. I would be curious to see if my opinion changes. But as of now, I stand firm on that this was a murder. So the Mercedes was facing the wrong direction in the tunnel, right? There's white paint on this black Mercedes. Then there's the question of this white Fiat that a witness saw in the tunnel. We're going to come back to this white Fiat alcohol situation. level of 20% for Mr. Henry Paul. Now, science and doctors say 20%, this man would have been incapacitated. So at what point did he become so under the influence? Because we saw the footage of him in the hotel. He, he did not exhibit 20% blood alcohol level. How do you just explain that away? The police were so dismissive of that fact. I don't think they even answered the question about that discrepancy in this episode, it was all about, we follow protocol. Um, we were not the only ones in the room. Basically, chain of command when it comes to evidence. But they did not explain how this man could have 20% blood alcohol level, considering um, visually he did not look impaired. And considering the fact also that 20%, he would have been flat on his ass. Am I six spy? that talked about a plan that he'd seen of an assassination taking place in a tunnel using bright light to distract or confuse the driver to cause an accident. This is an MI6 spot that revealed this Paparazzi that owned a white Fiat that committed suicide, then burned himself up in the car. You can't leave this up. That's why I cannot... I cannot understand why someone could comfortably say, oh, it's just an accident, drunk driver. It's just an accident. Yeah. It was no accident. And 85% of Brits believe that it was no accident. How do we just explain this stuff away? It blows my mind. So let's talk about this hunt for the white fiat. Yes, they exhausted a lot of man hours looking for this fiat, but I don't really think they were looking for this fiat because they were presented with um, two people potentially owning a white fiat that they totally dismissed. Who are those two people? Okay, so we have this security guy that matched the description from the eyewitness to AT. He's a security guy. He's brown skin, short hair. He has a dog, the dog that the eyewitness saw, right? Not only that, his white Fiat, he has since painted it red after the accident. After the accident, he painted his white Fiat red. Not only that, he had an alibi that could not be proven or disproven. Therefore, they said he's not our guy. He was not in this tunnel. This is the white Fiat that was discovered by Mohammed's security person who was investigating this accident. Um, he found a white Fiat that belongs to the paparazzi that just so happened to be in St. Tropez when Diana and Dodie were vacationing. Um, my first thought was, why did the cops not find this? Why did the security person for Mohammed discover this and not the cops? Okay, so Mohammed's security person saw a picture of the vehicle. He showed a picture of the vehicle. It was an old rusted um, Fiat, with the exception of this back left panel that is believed to have come in contact with the Mercedes. But you get the um, 
police on the scene and they say, oh, this is not the vehicle. I'm telling you, every evidence that was presented to them, they dismissed the eyewitness that saw someone on a moped crossing over in front of a vehicle and a white flash. That was dismissed. You know why that was dismissed? Because no one else could testify that they saw that. So it was dismissed. Here we have the cops dismissing all of this evidence on shaky grounds. I just don't understand how they came to these conclusions. It's, it is as though there was a conspiracy to cover this up. You cannot fault people for believing in this conspiracy when you have all this evidence in which the cops had chance after chance to really pursue these tidbits of information, but they chose to dismiss it. And the grounds in which they dismissed it is very shaky very shaky at best. All right, back to Mohammed's security guy that was doing his investigation. He made a point to say he came in, into this investigation with no bias. He wanted motive, opportunity, and evidence. Those were the elements of this case that would move him either way, murder or accident. He, he found motive. He found opportunity. He found evidence. Motive. Diana was out here with Mohammed, this Muslim man, making the royal family look bad. Not only were they looking bad, they were concerned about Dodi being the stepfather to the future king. Dodi, a Muslim man, a brown-skinned man, being the stepfather to the future king. That's motive. On the day of the accident, there's an article in one of the papers over there in which Philip, Prince Philip, the queen's husband, is making these concerns or expressing these concerns about Dodi. Opportunity. Opportunity was the fact that the paparazzi were outside of the Ritz, causing a scene, distracting folks. So there was opportunity to set this plan in motion. Evidence. Well, I just went through all of the evidence. I just went through all of the evidence. Considering once again all of this circumstantial evidence, we're gonna we're, we're gonna call it circumstantial. But to me, these are too many coincidences that were dismissed. So yeah, it was the gaslighting of, of Muhammad for me. I really felt got bad for this guy. Um, he's a dad. He lost his son, um, and the world just wants to move on and cover it up and chalk it off to an accident. But Mohammed was not going, and he was very vocal about the fact that he believed that this was a murder. Murder. He was so vocal. He had people around him scared because he was going after the establishment. He was going after the royal family, and that made a lot of folks nervous. But Mohammed did not back down, and I got to respect him for that because um, if either of us was in that position where our child was killed, murdered, died under weird circumstances, I think we all would be fighting that fight to prove or to find out what really happened to our child. So it broke my heart when Mohammed's spokesperson said that Mohammed wished he'd known the royal family was so against his relationship, so much so that he would have tried to get Dodi to end it because. He had no idea that they had these concerns. They had these strong feelings against his son dating Diana. And so back to the cops and their dismissal of all this evidence. You know, one of the investigators made the statement that um, they failed to find the white fiat. But at the end of the day, she felt like it was still the responsibility of the Mercedes the whole accident is still the fault of the Mercedes. It was a callous statement. I think it spoke to their bias going into this investigation. I really believe that they chalked this up to an accident. But on top of that, my, my feeling is also compounded on the fact that I truly believe that there was a cover-up. <laughs> the French investigated for two years only to conclude that this was an accident. And the whole while the French is investigating, you got a British government just completely silent. You got the people over there um, up in arms, really believing that this is a murder and the British government is silent. 
six years later, after the unrest, I'm going to call it unrest, the unrest in the country, they decide to open their own investigation six years later. And that's where the episode ends. I don't know, y'all. I'm not a real big conspiracy theorist. I really am not. But this, this is a lot. I don't know how you could not believe that this woman was murdered. On top of the fact, she predicted her murder and she predicted how it would go down in a car crash. 10 months before she died in a car crash. So that's it for this episode. I will definitely be um, tuning into episode three. And coming back with my thoughts, um, like I said, I really thought that I would um, at least be on the fence as this documentary progresses, considering people say it was just an accident. I'm not on the fence. There's a lot of evidence out there that was not taken seriously, and that's sad. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I will see you all in the next video. I thank you for watching. See you later.